What is up? Welcome to We've Got Mail, episode two. Um, I didn't get as much mail this week. In fact, I only got one package, so I was very aware of what I received. Um, if you guys have been kind of checking out what it is I'm doing in terms of you know card purchasing, uh, deep dive, stuff like that, the things that I've really found myself inundated with uh, information-wise and sort of interest-wise, then you guys are aware that I've done a lot of research on NBA, so not just NFL. Um, I know many of you guys think that I'm primarily an NFL fan slash analyst, which I am, but I am very much into NBA, and when it comes to cards, that is something that uh, I found myself leaning towards more because the reality is if you're the type of consumer that's just in this to purchase cards, to put them on the wall behind you, which I wish I had because this is just not a good situation currently. Um, if you're just looking to put cards on a wall, then it doesn't matter. Buy football. If that's all you want. Buy Jonathan Taylor. You know, Buy Patrick Mahomes. Buy whomever you want. Then it makes sense. But if you're getting into this with the intent to eventually flip cards, then you want to make sure that you've got cards in the most popular sports. And NBA is the most popular sport for trading cards. So I found myself recently sort of getting more position, more stake in some of these younger elite talents uh, in the NBA. And so recently I made a purchase. Uh, it was an auction. And I was going to look up the information on this just so I could be accurate. Um, there ended up being about 42 bids on this item. Uh, this one did come down to the wire. I had to uh, nudge my number a little bit. Um, and this was actually a Probstein auction, which I've learned from other people that have been doing this a lot longer than me, that there's sort of this belief out there that those particular auctions have a lot of people that are sort of artificially bumping the prices. So you have to make sure that you're not spending more than what you know is the cap for that card. So I felt like I still got this card under the price of where it's been going in a lot of auctions of late. Um, this is one of the top players in the NBA, which is why I was incredibly confident and excited about chasing this particular card. So yeah, I'm going to, uh, let's open this thing up right now so people can see exactly what it is I'm talking about. Um, I've also been going after slabbed cards. That's been my thing. I showed you guys on the last episode, I got a Julio Jones PSA 10, a rookie recognition card. Hilarious. I got it for 99 and one week later, after Julio had missed some weeks and had a blow-up week, that same card was selling for well over $200. In my auction, I was the only bidder. So, really interesting how this all played out. Um, but let's get into this. Let's open this package up. So, here it is right here. I've got one package in total. Um, I'm going to open this baby up again. I'm going to use some scissors here at the top. I don't know how this thing was packed in here. I don't know much about it. Uh, throw this away. Let's open this bad boy up. So, boom, there it is. As usual, wrap nice and tight in bubble wrap, taking care of this thing so that it doesn't get damaged in transit or, you know, whatever whatever may happen. Whether they're just going to chuck this thing into the truck, I have no idea. So, man, there it is in all of its glory. If I could get it out of this goddamn package. One of these days, maybe in like 25 years, you guys will see this thing get, you know, released from this package. So this one right here was a PSA 10. Um, chase this one down. This is my first PSA 10 NBA card. So I'm going to do this right here so I can see if I can get it uh, totally clear. So this is a uh, Donovan Mitchell PSA 10 rookie uh, prism base. Uh, let me flip it around here. See if I can redo this. See if you guys can get a nice clean look at it there. Oh, maybe are we getting it? I think we're getting it. There's the back side of the card again. Flip it to the front. Uh, PSA 10. So won this thing in an auction. Um, it was 40, 41 bidders or something like that. Uh, came down to the wire. And again, I think that I got this for underpriced. A lot of these cards, um, if you're going to get into NBA, if you're looking at some of these young players, whether it's you know uh, Devin Booker, whether it's Ben Simmons, whether it's Donovan Mitchell, who obviously is a pretty elite young talent at 23, 24 years old, a guy that's scoring 22, 24 points per game, putting you know the Utah Jazz on his back. 
Um, whether you're looking at those guys, whether you're looking at Jason Tatum or, of course, Luka Doncic, which we know is the most expensive of all of these guys, if you're trying to chase these young players, um, you can find them in pretty reasonable auctions. And, you know, the NBA is going to have a condensed offseason, so that was a concern. I think that's the reason why cards are a little more expensive than they have been. But I let, I probably let 10 to 12 auctions go that I was bidding on. Uh, for this exact same card, because again, there's quite a few cards out there um, of this type, but I probably let 10 to 12 auctions go because my personal cap was being exceeded every single time um, because guys were just running it up and running it up. And I saw one of these go for literally $100 less than what I paid for it because the person titled the, the card information wrong on the eBay sale. And this was a new seller. I looked up the information. They only had like six sales. A PSA 10 like this went for literally over $100 less than what I paid for it. So that's a total win for that guy. Part of my game is I want to track these cards. Um, I'm going to do an Excel spreadsheet. Obviously, right now, since I haven't sold any, I am at a net loss. Um, but my goal is to validate the sort of like liquid currency of these cards by purchasing, selling in high moments, buying, selling, and I will validate um, through the data research, which I'm doing with you know, other people uh, working on podcasts and things for the card stuff. I'm going to validate sort of the ability to make money flipping and selling cards because as fun as it is to buy cards, selling cards is really where I want to get. And I think getting stakes, positions on cards of high-end players like this, PSA 10 cards, where every time one of these auctions hits eBay, you got 30, 40, 50 people bidding on it. And we're in the off season. So if Donovan Mitchell goes on one of these stretches, like we saw him do last year, where he's putting up 30, 35, 40, 50 points on any given night, the hype is going to build. And suddenly this card is going to be valued at significantly more than what I paid for it. Um, and I'm confident that I'll be able to flip this for quite a bit more than I purchased it for, whether I do it this season, next season, again, these are hyper young, talented players, and the value of these cards is only going to rise. So that is my one package for this week. Again, here we go. Let me see if I can get in front of the camera. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, PSA 10, super nice card. Um, probably the, it's the nicest NBA card I own currently, um, and it's certainly not going to be the last one that I will purchase. I'm in a bunch of other auctions right now looking at some R.J. Barrett rookies. Uh, John Morant, obviously, uh, these are guys that I want to look at too. Uh, if you guys have any cards that you've purchased, if you have any NBA superstar cards, let me know. Uh, comment down below this video. I would love to talk cards with you guys. It's certainly something I am getting into more. And I will show you guys what comes in next week unless I lose my ass on one of these auctions. <laughs>